What do you say about someone who gives your life meaning? What do you say about someone who's always there with support and understanding? Someone who makes sacrifices so that your life will be easier and more successful. But what you say is that you love that person and treasure her. I, I simply can't imagine the last eight years without Nancy. A girl born in New York who became a movie star, wife, mother, and ultimately the first lady of the United States. It is this story we tell within the walls of our first lady gallery at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum. Nancy Davis Reagan was born Anne Frances Robbins on July 6, 1921 in Queens, New York. Her mother was an actor who supported herself and her daughter through her roles on stage. Nancy also had the acting bug and after college acted on stage in New York and on television before signing a seven-year film contract with MGM in 1949. Nancy Davis made 11 films in Hollywood, including East Side West Side, The Next Voice You Hear, and Hellcats of the Navy. In 1952, she left the Hollywood spotlight behind to marry Ronald Reagan. Their extraordinary personal bond helped sustain two lives of remarkable public accomplishments. As First Lady of the United States, she was the nation's hostess, the White House social director, an international ambassador, and a model for women across the country. And through it all, Nancy Reagan remained the president's closest confidant and staunchest defender. Mrs. Reagan once said, with the exaggerated ups and downs of life at the White House, I found out what is really important to me. I learned how to serve and serve she did. She took on numerous special causes of her own, including her campaign against drugs, Just Say No, and the Foster Grandparents Program, which paired older Americans with children with disabilities. In 1982, Nancy Reagan hosted a White House picnic for 600 foster grandparents. Guest of Honor Frank Sinatra wrote a song, To Love a Child, and donated the proceeds to support the program. But the cause most people attribute to Mrs. Reagan is her Just Say No program. When, in 1982, a schoolgirl asked Nancy Reagan what to do if she was off her drugs, the First Lady answered, Just Say No. And with that, her campaign against drug abuse had a new name. Just Say No. The First Lady traveled nearly 250,000 miles across the United States and foreign countries to help fight substance abuse. By 1988, more than 12,000 Just Say No clubs have been formed around the world. My chief concern is for the children, the children of America and of the world, that they will say no to drugs, that they will choose life and learn to live in the world that God made, not in the nightmare world of drugs. The children need our help, and as you carry out your important responsibilities, what better guide can there be than that what is best for our children will also be best for our nation. In this gallery, you learn more about her causes. Look at some of Mrs. Reagan's iconic dresses, examine childhood memorabilia, and explore some of the touching love letters President Reagan wrote her over the years. Mrs. Reagan's public life did not end in 1989 when President Reagan left office, whether attending events, hosting presidential debates, or christening the USS Ronald Reagan. Mrs. Reagan has remained a vibrant and active participant at the Presidential Library, which bears her husband's name. I think it's all too common in marriages that no matter how much partners love each other, they don't thank each other enough. And I suppose I don't thank Nancy enough for all that she does for me. So Nancy, in front of all your friends here today, let me say thank you for all you do. Thank you for your love. And thank you for just being you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this Inside the Reagan Library video. See you soon.